in July last year, the Democratic Party entered into a cooperation agreement with the ruling party, NRM. The deal which saw DP's leader, Norbert Mao, join the government as the Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister centered around a national dialogue, a new constitution, and a peaceful transition of presidential power, which has eluded Uganda since independence. But to achieve this important milestone, Norbert Mao will need to bring to the table a political elite that is sharply divided. The opposition accused the government he now is as part of arrests, detention, kidnaps, mismanagement of the economy, and intolerance. And in turn, the government accuses the opposition of ideological disorientation and tribal politics. Will Mao succeed to bring Uganda to its negotiating table? Tonight on the spot is the Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister, Chairman Norbert Mao. Honorable Norbert Mao, thank you so much for having honored our invitation. A warm welcome to you. It has been a long time. Thank you, Patrick. I'm happy to be back on the spot. Chairman Mao, sorry, I always call you. You know, I'm used I love of the that. chairman. I love that. <laughs> I'm used of the chairman Mao. Uh, I love Honorable, that. Honorable Mao, uh, you just, just yesterday, I was reading that you have come out with a set of propositions, proposals to have some kind of a constitutional reform that perhaps could put, put Uganda on a path that can make it democratically stable. But me, without really diluting your words and your own ideas, what is it that you bring on the table? I'm not the first Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. So when I entered office, the Honorable Muruli Mukasa, who is the Substantive Minister of Public Service, handed over to me a report and top of the agenda was the proposal to establish a constitutional review commission to examine proposals for a comprehensive constitutional reform. That's actually the biggest file on my desk. This is something which is on the lips and in the hearts of many Ugandans Many Ugandans feel that our constitution has had a test run and some nuts and bolts are loose, some parts are rusty, some parts are not working. Some of them have probably made things worse. So we need Ugandans to take charge of reforming the constitution. And Uganda is made up of building blocks. Before the colonialists came, we had these building blocks of Uganda. The constitution is supposed to be the glue that holds these building blocks together. The glue is getting loose and weaker. We need to strengthen it. And so I found on my desk a proposal from the last parliament, the, the 10th parliament. So what we are going to do is basically to do a few edits and take a paper to cabinet for cabinet to approve and decide that Uganda is ready to have a constitutional review commission. We will solicit names of eminent citizens from everywhere. Traditional institutions may propose names. Ministers will propose names. I'm sure the president has some people who he would want to see on the commission. Religious leaders, members of parliament, the media, even minorities, say Asians, who live in Uganda, why not? So that we can have a good team that can solicit views. But there are also views that are already on the table. These are the ones I, I was talking about. In 2015, I was part of a group 
that came up with something called the Citizens' Compact on Free and Fair Elections. Don't forget that the birthmark of the NRM government is the struggle for democracy. They went to the bush, and their stated reason was that elections had been rigged. So if you are judging the national resistance movement and those who gave up their lives in the bush struggle, that's what it was all about. So let me, let me ask no you. No wonder it is point number one on the 10-point program. So those proposals are a rack of proposals, how you appoint the Electoral Commission, what actually free and fair elections mean. We have proposals on restoration of term limits. There are those who want the army to leave parliament. There are proposals for a federal system of government, or at any rate, greater devolution of power to regions. There are proposals particularly from the party I lead, on changing the electoral system from the, what we call the first past the post, meaning if I contest with 10 people and I get 15% of the vote, I go to parliament. So let me ask, you found proposals on the table in the office you took over as Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister, but you also had your own ideas. Are, are they in harmony? That they similar? We, we expect that there will be lively debate. The reason we have debate is because we are not agreed. If we were agreed, there would be no debate. So there are those who want federalism. I estimate that that number to be definitely over 60%. According to the Odoki Commission, more than 60% wanted a federal system of government. So these proposals are not new. The truth, Patrick, is that a constitution is a living document. But a constitution should not be changed casually. A constitution actually should be very difficult to change because it's, a, it's like the structure of, of, of a house. You, 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 you don't bring Double down the structural integrity you don't bring down pillars easily and i think some of the pillars of our constitution were brought down uh, one of them is of course term limits ugandans believed that a peaceful change of government can be facilitated by term limits namely a leader however good would have to give way for another leader and I think there is no better leader to set that example than President Yoweri Museveni. So let me, let me just now, I, I, I hear you, you have the proposals and maybe they mean good, I'm sure they do. And others will come. And others will come. But, but do you understand the people you're dealing with? Do you understand the environment in which you're working in? Because the constitution we have has been mutilated beyond recognition on purpose by the very people you want to, 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 to bring your proposals to. The things you want to, to talk about were there in the Constitution. People died trying to defend those, those clauses. I people will, struggled, I will, including I yourself. Will, I, will, I will put your very words to you. You have said the Constitution has been mutilated beyond recognition. I wouldn't use those words. I would say vital elements were removed. And if I use your imagery, they have taken the pillars. Yeah, the there, structural there, strength of the constitution there, has been compromised. There, there has been on purpose. There has been consistent agitation opposing those those who want to disembowel the constitution. It it is a struggle. Even even in a dictatorship, there are always forces of democracy that continue to say, no, we must move in this direction. So you asked me a straight question. Do I understand the people I'm dealing with? Um, I want you to, to be very straightforward because I hear 
the language people use, they refer to the government as a junta, a military dictatorship, and so on. Granted, the bottom line is that this is our country. And the people who you are referring to are, are human beings. They are mortal. Mao. Now, you, Mao. You, Let, I want to refresh you. are talking I'm as actually, if they are I'm immortal. actually a student of Mao. Let me tell you this. In fact, in this discussion, I'm only going to use your words to refresh your mind. Because this is a, you remember at one point, Chairman Mao, you said for those who decided to cross the aisle and maybe join the NRM, you actually liken it like people who have decided to dine with the devil. Your own words. That in fact, if you want to dine with the devil, you better use a very long fork. You are there now on the table. Uh, how, how big are the devil's clothes? So you're close. I, your own words, Chairman Mao. I, I think there's a danger when you you try to distort idioms. Uh, for instance, when I say you are a star, it doesn't mean that you live in the sky. It is imagery. But that imagery was on purpose to say the when, people across the aisle were dangerous. Your own I'm, words. I'm not the one who actually created that idiom of saying when you dine with the devil, you use a long spoon. But you say that it in reference, a, it is you imagery. say that, Chairman Mao, in reference to the people who were in the Democratic Party and other parties that decided to cross the aisle and work with the NRM. It's very clear that they had decided to dine with the devil. In fact, you even advised they better use a long spoon or a long fork to eat that, with them. That, that and when I saw you joining on that table, I'm wondering, how did you uh, cross and start that, dining uh, with the devil. That idiom means you have to be careful. So, so and, now you and, know the people you're working with. So, and you're very careful. Patrick, you know I'm not an idiot. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Stop insulting me. I am not insulting I you. Have gone, I you. have ever met Joseph Coyne. Just so that, may I introduce you to the Honorable Norbert Mao, who went to Garamba and dined with Joseph Coyne and came back. So I think... Uh, it's dangerous as a journalist to, to overgeneralize. It is true that we are dealing with a political party whose origins is in a military struggle. And therefore... Now, now we know. Chairman Mao. So if you, 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 you don't have to lecture me. I'm not lecturing you. About I'm, only, uh, I'm, only, I'm only using you, uh, look, you as a reporter. You, you, as you, a reporter. I think what you are trying to suggest, probably you are saying that uh, I'm, I did what I criticized. The DP and the NRM have a cooperation agreement. That is unprecedented. At least give me credit for that. Secondly, the objectives of the cooperation agreement are clearly stated. And achieving them is not entirely up to President Museveni and Norbert Mao. We can make our efforts, but this is about Uganda. We are talking about a national dialogue to build consensus. They are, this country is hurting, Patrick. Yes, it is. You know, in this discussion, uh, on and that's Mao, why we Mao, need a dialogue. I want to be looking into your proposals that you make on the table as you serve in the cabinet. But I also want to be taking you back as somebody who has been following you for quite some time, right from the university time. Because actually, I find these words, which I'm, when I'm bringing them up, and, and you seem actually to choke on these words, because you said that we better be careful the words we say should be soft and tender. When you come to swallow them again, they shouldn't choke you. And if, there they if, are. If, they are put if, you in a chokehold. If, if you your were, own words are put you in a chokehold, Chairman Mao. If you were diligent, by now you would be showing our viewers videos of those very words. Oh, you because never say No, you never say Because first and foremost, I don't want you to put words in my mouth. I know how I talk. So I wish to challenge you. Before you make any reference to what I said, well, tell you, our you, viewers, you, turn to the <laughs> screen. So, so, so that we can have an honest you, debate. You, you, you said... Otherwise, you are behaving we were, like a cartoonist no, no. rather you, than you a, a, you, you a talk show those host. Are, those are your own words. I'm trying to remind that, that, that those... Are those my who, only words? No, there are many. Other no, then why don't you million. quote others? By the way, I'm, I'm big enough to contradict myself. You know? So this is it now. Okay. 
yeah, to contradict yourself, you need to be very big because, number one, you have evolved. You must, fo f you must focus on the bigger picture. Where Uganda is, we are now in a kind of Noah's Ark situation. Do you think a lion and an antelope can be together in an ark unless they are looking at the bigger picture? So where Uganda is, we are in that kind of situation. You can call me a person who is trying to build a Noah's Ark for Uganda. And there will be many who are skeptical, like you, who want to continue tying some words I have used on my neck. You are welcome, but uh, I think that's only for your amusement. For Ugandans who want a better future, I don't think they want to debate what Norbert Mao said. They, no, want, because to, they want because to talk about... Because uh, your record shows your integrity shows your focus and I shows think I think you should talk about what I have done yes okay so uh, now, now pr that pr you primarily mm -hmm. we are proposing to involve Ugandans to re-engineer their future to build a new Uganda to give Uganda a new beginning and if that is a reason for me being hanged I'll walk to the gallows voluntarily I want Ugandans to see what they have never seen before, change without bloodshed. Let me be the sacrifice. I don't mind. That's why uh, if I wake up and I'm not being insulted on social media, that's a bad day. If I came here and you didn't try to bring those words, I would have said I'm this not, show I'm has I'm failed. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not bringing those no, words. No, I, I may have said them, but if you hadn't brought them, yes, yes. I, I, I would uh, I'll because be very disappointed be, because be, that's, when, that is the typical somebody, preoccupation. When somebody did, w you know, walk away from the Democratic Party or UPC, uh, the chairman of then would say, you know what, they, they, they have lacked the political ideology, what they have... I followed. want you to put in your own words what I did. Have I left the Democratic Party? Well, I, it's a sub I, subject I, to debate because I, you, that's ridiculous. You, you can't, because, sta you can't start debating <laughs> whether I'm a member of DP or not. Is that really subject to debate? It is. Hmm? Because now, now you're executing the NRA manifesto. I think. You, have you read the cooperation agreement, the version which is on the in the media? Have you read it? If it works and works. No. And dark, <laughs> and since si dark. since you you but want to interrogate me. I also want to interrogate you to ask you that, number one, you are mistaken to mislead our viewers that I am joined the NRM. If I joined the NRM, I would be the one to tell you. Don't I know where the NRM headquarters are? You are a minister. And I don't need your permission. You, you are a minister in President Yoweri Museveni's government. Yes. And the chairman and president of the NRM party. The others are just semantics. You are executing it the is manifesto. Not, it is not. You are. It you are the not, cabinet it is, minister. It is not. Uh, when, when the cabinet of Yoweri Museveni do not does not do things right, you have collective responsibility. I I saw when you are advertising this talk show, you talk you deceived the viewers that we are coming to talk about constitutional reforms, but you are going back on what seems to. You have been I, dying I, to I, talk I, about. No. Maybe I, I, because I, I, after <laughs> signing the cooperation <laughs> agreement, I didn't come to your talk show. <laughs> so will you invite me to another one? Since you want to talk about I, the I relations. Can, I, I, I can see how, I can I think see how you, it works. I think you want us the, to talk about the, the cooperation between I, I just, DP I want, I and wanted, NRM. I, I wanted, I wanted to, to, go, to bring the, back, the, the, the background and to be where we but are, be truthful. and then we we'll see where we're headed. But be truthful. But uh, have I lied to on your you, you are lying to say, I have joined NRM. That's a lie. But you're executing NRM's manifesto. No. You? you see, the cooperation agreement even has a clause on agreeing to disagree. Please, next time prepare better, Patrick. So, no, 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 I have prepared better. No, you it's haven't. I you have, haven't I, prepared. I, I, I have. It's you. Okay, but can I look. give you a copy of the cooperation <laughs> no. agreement and you read it? <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the issue. The issue is, how are you going to have these proposals accepted by a group of people who have been able to lie through and through? You are also a liar, and I'm here <laughs> with you. 
<laughs> you, are, you are a big liar. And uh, you're lying I, I, to the people. And I'm I here with I'm tolerating I, I you. Used, I have used your own word, Chairman Mao. Unless you, if you want to say you never said it, that's okay. I, I, that's I, have, okay. I have challenged you to bring on screen my words. Because I the, don't, the, I don't the, think the, it is on. fair for you to put words into my mouth. Just to... You have actually said, let, let me you have actually let, accepted let, them, let, let, let me that this was let, just imagery. But let me assist you no, no. By, at, by telling you, because you are saying that what I'm proposing to do is impossible on account of what you know about the record of a government which you believe is full of liars, so they can never do anything good, they can never keep any promise. That is the view of Patrick Kamara of NTV. So how, how do you go about it? I have just seen the photo of the Aga Khan and President Museveni there. Didn't that give birth to NTV, which pays you a salary? <laughs> so so why, why are you talking as if, you know, there is nothing good at all? But that's not what I've said. I, no, but that's this, what you are saying. Listen, listen. You are presenting the government as listen. a bunch of okay, crooks. I, 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 have, uh, I, have, I have it on good authority that at least President Jehovah Museveni at one point said he wouldn't be party to anybody who is trying to change the constitution. He, I, and I, I was inclined to. I am him not more. President Museveni. Yes. Please bring him he's, here he's chairman, and, and he's, interview he's chairman, him. He's chairman and president of Uganda. And when I when I'm telling you that you are dealing with people who have the elements of lying, are you are you not concerned? Now you are talking to me like that. What will you say when you talk to the first lady who has a marriage vow? He ex she exchanged with the president. You'll, you'll be talking like that I also? Would, I wouldn't know whether that's no, be be, no, because the way you are reasoning... I don't want to go no, there. No, no, because... Are you sure? Patrick, I'm not going to allow you to run away from your basic frame. Your basic frame is that President Museveni is a thorough liar who never tells any truth, who never does anything good. So I've now put it to you. If you are ever interviewing the First Lady, will you ask her that... Do you really trust this man's marriage matrimonial vow? I wouldn't, but I, I, would, I wouldn't ask that. Why not? I wouldn't ask that. Because you believe that President uh, Museveni uh, but never but tells not, the truth. I wouldn't, but, but she knows best. She knows better. So in the same she, way, she knows, she knows in the better. same way I'm saying... She knows better. I am uh, and I wouldn't doubt what she knows. No, <laughs> no. In the same way, I am telling you that uh, this world, there are many contradictions. Mm. And... Uh, it is the same President Museveni who once said he would never talk to the LRA, who eventually agreed okay. to talk to the LRA. It is him who, in the beginning, only wanted something called a presidential pardon. Eventually, he signed an amnesty law. People can change. Now, now you're talking. So there can be some change. Yeah, okay. yeah people so. can change. And it, they can change either because they are persuaded, and I think President Museveni has very persuadability quotient. Okay. So now, for... He has a very high persuadability I quotient. So, he may have his uh, own issues. I may disagree with him on some aspects, but I have chosen to trust that he loves Uganda enough to put Uganda first. And you can blame me for trusting that. And I hope we will have another interview where you will apologize to me for your lack of faith. Well, do you think your apology, your apology could come sooner than later? But, I, I, but, will, but, I will happily <laughs> apologize. <laughs> but for you, for you to bundle but, the entire government, you are now talking like these Europeans who say Uganda is homophobic, as if there are bands of Ugandans hunting homosexuals day and night. Your generalization is shocking, to be honest. So now, how do you prepare yourself to be as persuasive as possible so that if the constitutional reforms come and the dialogue comes, for those who are scared to be dialogued out of power, they actually don't get the scare? I don't think the purpose of what I'm doing is to remove anybody from power. That's not my primary aim. It may be a byproduct, you know? You, you must distinguish between the primary product and the byproduct. The, the primary product is a, a united Uganda. The primary product is reconciliation, where we forgive each other, 
for how much we have hurt each other, where we accept to forgive those who have hurt us. Barara, Luero, Renzori, Kasese, Teso, Acholi, West Nile, Lango, Karamoja. That is a main product. Number two, a country that has a legitimate government that you do not have people refusing to accept that a, a government is legitimate because that is the reason why the NRA went to the bush. That is a major product we want. The other product we want is a safe country. We live in a very tough neighborhood. God in his wisdom gave us a beautiful country, but we are in a very tough neighborhood. Even as we think about who should be president, what sort of state we need, we must know that there are active volcanoes all around Uganda. And fourthly, we need a new national consensus. Those are the, the other byproduct of one leader giving way. That is a byproduct. It is, it is really not the primary goal of my mission. My, my primary goal is that we should have Ugandans who are preoccupied with having a better life. Right now, politics is on top of everybody's head. You go to a graduation party, a 22-year-old graduate will announce that I'm the next member of parliament. That is not what happened in some of the countries I know. They are busy making innovations. They are busy in business. They are busy building the country. And they come to politics when they have achieved a certain measure of experience. So it means there's a, I, my job is to, to, to make an ululation, what you would call enduru, to, to call upon Ugandans, including you, to come and say, let's rescue the future of Uganda by distinguishing between what is primary and what is secondary. So I appeal to you, Patrick Kamara, don't major in minors. No. Because you are here roasting me <laughs> Listen, ab about... So what, 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 what you call primary objective and, and the byproduct, there could be people in positions of power who actually are interested in the byproduct. And that byproduct can actually disorganize what is supposed to be the primary objective. Do, do, you, do, you, do you appreciate that? There are those who say President Museveni is irrelevant in the transition debate. I say he's at the core of it. He's as important as the mathematical pi in finding the square of a circle. Without the pi, you will never solve that. That's where we disagree. Two, there are those who believe that transition cannot happen if President Museveni is still in the seat. I am telling such people that the transition has already started because Ugandans are talking about it. And President Museveni is at the heart of it. I believe he is conscious of what his legacy should be. I believe he is conscious of what he promised Ugandans at the steps of the National Assembly. So I know you are talking based on lived experience. But I have also told you that circumstances can change people and people can also be persuaded. So while there are those who may say that, look, the fundamental thing is to remove a person. There, there are those who say, we are removing a dictator. I don't begrudge them their, their opinion. But it is important to understand that you must deal, you must face what you fear most. So now I, I actually think those who don't want to face President Museveni and debate with him are the biggest cowards in Uganda. And they are the ones who are delaying the progress of the country. How, how do you we must intend, sit at the table how together. How do you intend to bring the people on the table together? Who, how do they qualify to go on that table? Who, who chooses who's coming? How did you become the talk show host of On The Spot? <laughs> no, but, but seriously. How uh, are there other people there who would want? I'm sure so you, you educated uh, yourself. You, you'll, you'll appoint some people? When we are talking about the table, it is, uh, when we say a national dialogue, it is in reality 
a dialogue for the whole country. I think we'd rather focus on what are we going to talk about. Let's talk about the segments of our society. Before the colonialists came, we had our societies. The glorious kingdom of Toro, Buganda, Bunyoro, Ankole, Busoga, and all these other places, they were there. They must express themselves so that we find a formula on how we can live together in harmony. I don't think it is wise to exclude anyone. In fact, in our cooperation agreement, we talk about an inclusive national dialogue. Inclusive means all currents must flow into that mighty river of the national dialogue. In addition to that, we have to tame the radical elements on, on all sides. There are elements in the national resistance movement who, in their opinion, there can be no Uganda without President Museveni. So they say he will be there whether anybody likes it or not. And then on this other extreme end, there are those who think that we must not talk about anything. We must not even present any ideas or policies until President Museveni has been removed. Reminds me of what a BBC journalist asked then rebel leader Peter Otai about his program for the country. And he said, we have no program. We are still fighting. So there are those who believe that they should not prepare on what to do when they take power. Those extreme elements, we have to accept that they are there. But my duty is to promote ideas which will build a broad center. That's why President Museveni talks about unity. And it is not unity in terms of what you are talking about, a table. Because when Ugandans talk about a table, they are talking about politics basically in terms of eating. They, they, they think that everybody who is invited to the table is just interested in the goodies that the political office has to offer. I think that, in my view, is secondary. I propose to you, Patrick, that let us focus on building a broad center. Not everybody with that will agree with what I'm proposing, Correct. especially these extreme elements. Yeah, but but these extreme elements must be paralyzed. They must, they must really keep on reducing. They must be fought and they must be fewer. They must be on the fringe. Okay. We, we may not totally silence them. But you, also but, know, you but should also know that those extreme ends, those radicals, it's not that they hate each other. They could be radical because they love their country more. And they, they have a different view of how Uganda should move forward. And that is what is making them to be so radical. But Chairman Mao, hold on to your points because we're going to take a break. On the spot, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On the Spot. My name is Patrick Amari. My guest tonight is Honorable Nobat Mao, Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. You have a set of proposals uh, for constitutional reform. So now, from you to your table, where you are, how are they? What is going to be their journey before we can actually see them, you know, effectively being implemented? Patrick, let me share with your viewers the process. Okay. Because so far, we have been skipping over the content, and there's a plethora of proposals, a rack of proposals. I told you that my predecessor, General Kahindo Tafide, had actually prepared a cabinet paper. You remember that the media had even given some names. Now, it is that same paper. I did not find a tabula rasa. I did not find a, a blank sheet on my desk. There is something I have to work with. Like a minister who knows that I'm part of the government, 
these are not Mao I think this is not a Mao thing I'm just the skipper so I called the Attorney General I called the Deputy Attorney General I called the PS I called the Solicitor General and a few others and shared with them what we need to do to move things forward and we agreed that number one any commission must have a secretariat one of the dangers of creating commissions and my best example is the the land commission of uh, lady justice catherine Bamugemerere. there was a lot of moving around a thick report was presented and it is there gathering dust somewhere because it was not anchored anywhere the attorney general advised me that we should make sure when we establish a constitutional review commission it must have a secretariat and there's no better secretariat than the uganda law reform commission okay. it has the expertise so we are sure that when the president assents to the instrument appointing the constitutional review commission there will be a secretariat to anchor it the members will be drawn from ugandans and it is my expectation that there should be people who are not just thinking about the next election but people who are thinking about the long-term future of uganda we will book a date through the office of the vice president who is in charge of the agenda and she will instruct the cabinet secretary to schedule a day when we present that paper. That paper does not contain constitutional amendment proposals. It simply talks about the terms of reference of the proposed constitutional review commission and it will have proposed names. Already, there are many people bombarding our the, the, the rules of engagement our office with the CVs of people and so on and we welcome them we, we want to really have a, a large catchment area when cabinet approves that then the instrument will be issued and the president will flag off the Constitutional Review Commission which will have enough time to do its work, take into account proposals that are already available, and then probably create panels that will go around the country collecting views. Mm -hmm. But before that, I have requested for an opportunity to brief the president so that I can find out three things. Number one, the ideas that are agreeable to him. The ideas that may not be agreeable but are negotiable. And then the non-negotiables. When you are a minister, it's very important to know that from your principal. The non-negotiables, that one, you put it on the back burner. The negotiables, you prepare persuasive arguments so that on balance, he will move towards your position. And then those that are agreeable to him, I think it's a no-brainer. He will be on our side supporting them. Those are the, the three categories. So your, your first Now, that applies also to all the segments of society. If you go to the traditional institutions, they will also have the things that are agreeable, the things that are negotiable, negotiable and the things that are non-negotiable. And even individuals have that. So as a leader, your job is to bring as many people as possible to adopt a position where there is harmony. So now that is about the process. In terms of the ideas, you ask yourself, what are the things that keep Ugandans awake? The number one thing, they tell me, we have seen change in Congo. Whether you call it a cosmetic change 
But at least President Kabila is there with a long white beard in his farm and President Sesekedi is piloting the country. The same in Burundi. In the words of the, the, the Apostle Paul in Galatians, who bewitched Ugandans, how come we cannot achieve that? And it's our duty to tell Ugandans that the most important thing is the constitution, and nobody should be above the constitution. So now, when you bring those proposals, and Ugandans in a dialogue to talk together, there are people who are hurting. There are people who have gone through very difficult times. Do you also envisage to have some kind of truth-telling, or we are going to forget the past? Because it will be important for some kind of a, a truth and, and reconciliation kind of agenda so that we can say, okay, we're not just going to gloss over them or cover them, but we shall talk about them so that we can co reconcile fully. The culture I come from, the Acholi culture, is a culture of truth-telling and reconciliation. That's why even in our culture we don't even have the death penalty. Nobody would ever be sentenced to death. If you belong to another clan in my community and a member of my community kills one from yours, I would keep the accused person in a safe place and come and face you and admit guilt on his behalf. Then we start negotiations. It is called matoput, and it is an elaborate process. We need that in Uganda. Uganda needs matoput. As you know, we have had incidents where some people have committed uh, heinous atrocities. I am comfortable talking about the ones I know about. Our Acholi elders went to West Nile where some of our people who came as part of the UNLA <coughs> mm -hmm. first forgot that their home was further north towards Gulu. The first branch on the West Nile Road went and committed atrocities. Our elders went, met the elders from the West Nile community, and they carried out a ceremony called the Bending of Spears, Gomotong. You basically physically bend spears to show that we are now one. We will not fight, fight anymore. Our elders came in bus loads to Luero to apologize. Of course, the elders were not in the Luero Triangle fighting, but they wanted to own whatever their children who got accused of. This is in our culture. And I think there's no part of Uganda that has not suffered. Now, it is important that we break the cycle of bloodletting. We break the cycle of violent change of government. That is the whole purpose of the national dialogue. It will be painful. There are those who do not understand this. This is what we call transitional justice. To deal with historical legacies of violence and build a new society. South Africa did it. There are those who are very reserved. The government, to its credit, adopted what is known as a transitional justice policy. It is there. We even have a draft transitional justice bill, which has got all these proposals. But I think we may end up having to establish something akin to what is in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, they have a national dialogue commission, then a national reconciliation commission. We can decide to mix the two, a national dialogue and reconciliation commission. To carry on the work that the Interreligious Council of Uganda <coughs> and the, the Elders uh, forum. forum of uh, Professor Maggie Kigozi, and uh, Justice, Ogola. Justice Ogola and that entire group. We must support their effort and take into account the proposals from the political parties who have set some parameters for what a legitimate dialogue should be. There are other things that will help us to, to do what is in the NRM 10-point program.
to redress historical grievances. In the Democratic Party, we came up with a very radical proposal to set up a stolen assets recovery tribunal. You know, there, there has been pillage in Uganda, we have to admit. There are those who have uh, stolen road reserves, there are those who have stolen wetlands, there are those who have stolen forests, there are those who have stolen game parks, there are those who have stolen custodian board property, there are those who have stolen public lands, there are those who have stolen property belonging to Kidgo kingdoms, and there are those who have stolen property belonging to the central government. There are those who have stolen land, you hear of Naguru. Therefore, in support of what the Honorable Betty Kamia has been talking about, if you have a stolen assets recovery tribunal, then any citizen who knows of any person who on account of his or her power and influence has stolen any property, be it land, be it any asset, then the tribunal would interrogate that, examine that report, and make a judgment. I think that will send a clear signal that you know what? Books are going to be balanced. We cannot have a country which is a free for all, where somebody declares that there's going to be a project in Naguru. And then all of a sudden, the land is being pilfered, plot by plot, plot by plot. We have issues like Aswa Ranch. The people there are complaining that the boundary has been extended. We are hearing rumors that Aswa Ranch, which is supposed to be a government asset, now has people who have freehold titles. The answer to that is a stolen assets recovery tribunal. Whether we are going to implement it in the next two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, but there must come a time when we must face our demons. Okay. No one is going to face our demons on our behalf. So I can see your first and biggest hurdle is to have President Jawedi Museveni buy into your idea because you want to first have him, talk to him, and then think about what is negotiable, what is agreeable, and what is non-negotiable. You, if you get this meeting, are you walking into this meeting with optimism? That you, the you, major you, 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 you have to, Patrick, you have to know that I first had a face-to-face -face meeting with President Museveni when I was 23 years old as Guild President of Makerere. And I got to respect his enormous capacity to listen, <laughs> even to rubbish. I, actually, he's very patient, extremely patient. So I'm sure he will listen to me the, because I've seen him listening to a lot of people, all sorts of people. So I'm very optimistic that he will listen. He has the experience. I once commented in an offhand manner. I said, you know, you have to respect the man because you know these sports called rodeo. You know rodeo? Mm. Riding a wild horse. Okay. It is a, a sports for cowboys. A wild horse. Yes. Sometimes a wild bull. Now, if you can last five seconds <laughs> on a bull which is kicking in, on, in all directions, then you are definitely a good rider. So we have had presidents who have been ousted after a, a few days, a few months, a few years. So if someone has been there this long, I think he should be a case study. I, at least I'll give that to him. So I expect him to take very seriously what I will be proposing. He does not have to agree. But I will also take very seriously whatever he, he, he will tell me and whatever he will tell the country. But I know that he has frequently talked about the future of Uganda. That's why he's talking about the, the, the bazukulu. When you call people bazukulu, it is a recognition that now 
you are you are talking about people who are more than two generations okay, uh, I, away from how, you. How are you moving in persuasively to have people who have a different political ideology other than NRM or the Democratic Party to also think the way you think that, that we should have a dialogue, we should have these kind of reforms because it would be dangerous if you agreed to talk and yet you have uh, other major political parties in opposition right now to say no, we are not taking part. If, if they don't, somehow they take away its legitimacy of what you're trying to do. What matters is that the door should be open. You know, in our home we used to have one of our siblings who once in a while would say, I'm not going to eat. But then at about 3 a.m. you hear the banging of saucepans and plates but, uh, in the kitchen. It means they have, <laughs> they have changed their mind. So You should remember that I know your siblings. So. I'm not, I that's why I'm not <laughs> mentioning any names. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, yes. is the door open? I think President Museveni is committed to speaking to anyone. Though people have been insulting the forum we call iPod, but iPod actually is a great idea because it allows us to have a clearing house the way commercial banks have a, a clearing house who owes who, who owes what. And we have been insulted that we go there to drink tea, that we go there to be bribed, that we go there for photo opportunities. We, we don't mind. But the point is, imagine where Uganda would be if the people at the dawn of our country, namely the first president of Uganda, Sir Edward Mutesa, and Dr. Milton Obote, first prime minister, had had occasion to sit and talk, to have a dialogue, a lot of problems would have been avoided. I'll go to my grave believing that dialogue is the way to Uganda to move forward and put behind the legacy of violence. So we have got to talk to all the other political formations why would we restrict the dialogue to DP and NRM? That would be extremely foolish and risky. That would simply be like putting a bandage over a festering wound. Yeah, but you see, that is a, a likely scenario if the other people do not buy into this idea. Eventually, either you buy into dialogue or you become irrelevant. Because to, to have staying power in politics, you must also be adaptable. You remember a political party in South Africa known as the Pan-Africanist Congress, extremely radical and extremely adamant, totally resistant to dialogue, denouncing Nelson Mandela for shaking hands with the white people. In fact, their motto was one settler, one bullet, which was extremely persuasive, especially if you are talking to slum dwellers and people who are frustrated and feel oppressed. When you say one settler, one bullet, nothing could be more exciting. But how do you put that into practice? It's not easy. You, you can go around telling the world, you know, you know, we are removing a dictator, we are removing a dictator, but uh, wh why are you dancing around the problem? Get on with it. But For know, us, we believe know, that. Know, right now, it appears Ugandans are so divided. There are people who are so angry. And some of them, their anger is justified. They are, you know, there, there have been so-called abduction of people. They accuse the state of abducting its own people, yet the state is supposed to be, to be, to be protecting them. So, so you're going to find that kind of background. People who have maybe have even been detained. Maybe their relatives have been taken and, 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 and held in places that are not gazetted for, for arrest. So there's that kind of background. Anger who are saying, no, we can't even sit with the people because we have, they have, we have been tormented so much. How do you intend to talk to these people, persuade them, say, no, what? Yes, it, I it hear is you, a, but you need to come and talk. It, it requires us to change our language. I loved it when President Museveni changed the way he was addressing the issue of beatings. You remember one time he was speaking on TV and he talked about a political leader who was beaten up thoroughly. I think he had second thoughts and realized that this is not necessary. So he came back on TV and said, why do you beat anybody? Stop beating Ugandans. I think when a, a leader uses that language, 
it really changes the way the country responds. I remember the president was uh, adamant about the conditions in the IDP camps because he was looking at it as a general who wanted to isolate rebels by keeping civilians in a camp, whether voluntarily or by force. Then one day he went to Amoro, one of the biggest camps in Acholi. I listened to him talking to the people and he said, my people, I'm very sorry to see you in this situation. I'm truly sorry. You can imagine the response. Ugandans want a leader who cares. But by the way, it is not so much about whether you are giving people a myoga, whether you are giving a PDM or what. What people want to know is that you, you care, you, you, you understand their plight, and, and you want them to be better. It's, it's common sense. There's a, there's, a, there's a famous story of a boy who used to go grazing cattle on the hills, and he would shout obscenities. Of course, the echoes brought back the obscenities. So he went to the mother and told the mother that, you know, there's a boy who is very vulgar, shouting obscenities at me, even insulting your unmentionables. Then the mother knew what was happening and told the boy, please, tomorrow go back and say good things. Tell that boy, I love you. I want to meet you. Come home. Be my visitor. So he went back home. Because he was getting back the same echoes, told the mother, the boy has changed. I don't know what has happened. He said, you know, please, that's okay. I hope you, can, you will find him. It's the same with politics. If you are going around telling the public, that you know, do this, do that. It it can it can uh, backfire on you, ultimately. So even those who want change, even those who want to throw out President Museveni by whatever means they think viable, for the sake of the future of Uganda, they should use language which is not like that of one settler, one bullet. That's why President Mandela agreed to put. The clerk as his vice president. Okay. He even agreed to share the Nobel Peace Prize. Can you imagine sharing the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize with the leader of a political party that kept you in jail for 27 years? Now, that brings me to my main point. I am from Gulu. I hear people talk about torture, drones, and so on. Let me tell you, if there is a community that should detest the NRA and the NRM and President Museveni, that community is in that belt from Teso, Lango, Acholi. You think it is not West. in the Renzori region? I can add Renzori, <laughs> but in that area is for the longest period. So who has a better moral authority to say, look, let us forgive one another, let us apologize. There was a war. Because the, the people in the north who were in the bush were also not throwing flowers at the NRA. They were shooting. But you know, when a government commits atrocities, it hurts more. All right. So I think we are in a better position to really say peace talks are better, dialogue is better, forgiveness is better, and apologizing is okay. It is better. Honorable Norbert Mao, hold on to your points because we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to give you an opportunity so that you can have your say. You can send your questions or your comments on our WhatsApp number and other platforms. I'll be able to read your comments and your questions to Chairman Mao. But I hope you bring them uh, with civility because even though the debate is the nature of the game, but let us debate or even, even disagree. Civility, it is okay. <laughs> let us civility. No, we're going to do it with civility. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guest tonight is the Honorable Norbert Mao, Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. And now we have reached that moment when you have to have your say. You can send us your questions or your comments. I'll be reading them for the Honorable Norbert Mao to respond. And uh, here is the very first. Mr. Kamara, a good program. I wish Honorable Minister's proposal are embraced 
by President Museveni. This is Yeku in Kyotera. And thank you so much, Yeku. Uh, Moses, I like the way Honorable Mao puts his things, sounds a uh, mature politician. I wish you have, we have people who don't impose impunity to other Ugandans, like Honorable Mao. And our current president, Mr. Museveni, everyone thought he was going to blast ministers in Imabati saga or NSSF. He played it cool. You two guys, I like the way you handle politics. Honorable, tomorrow we are in Muyenga. Don't hide from to a work of self, 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 man. Okay, I think it's... What does the minister now have <coughs> for government leaders who forge land titles, certificates in fictitious names, and sell government lands to their personal benefit? Uh, Mao is one of the biggest pessimists of the democratic progress this, in this country. I sometimes wonder what guts people have to say certain things while referring to holy books like the Bible. Mao very well knows he's the biggest traitor that ever befell the betterment of the entire system in our country, Kisame Jonah from Jinja. Uh, President Museveni doesn't seem to trust anyone with this country simply because he doesn't see anyone capable, and that's why I think he won't buy Chairman Mao's idea. Unless Mao has someone whom everyone is ready to accept and rally behind him, Amon in the Chari Wajara. Thank you, Amon. <coughs> so, uh, Honorable and State Minister for Justice, though the issue of constitutional review is important, that we, the youth, we are unemployed, state officials are corrupt, we need also to address such issues. We still have trust in our government. This is Suvi in Luero. Thank you, Suvi. Good evening, Minister Mao knows the, that Museveni is dealing with, but to me, he seriously, de seriously deserves to be encouraged and at least he has made history of trying to hold the bull by the horns. Uh, you haven't put a name. Uh, President General, good evening. I like and enjoy your presentations, especially on succession strategy, but I doubt if the NRM government led by the President will support it. Let us watch the space, Honorable, as we pray for you. Patrick, thank you for hosting Chairman Mao. That's what Uganda needs. Thomas from Fort Porto. And thank you for the articulations. Mpiangu Dennis Swangi from Nansana. Okay, I think now I'm going to read two more and then the, the, the Honorable will be able to respond. Thank you for the show. I am I'm Presha Kai Miles watching live from Dubai. Is Mao still in opposition? Abdul Muhammad, uh, and how far has he gone with the negotiation of a peaceful transition and what is his position on the anti homosexuality bill? Abdul Muhammad Kasami, I'm really impressed with nobody's submissions. I just hope you. Mao keep his head up to move these constitutional reforms without any interference from third parties. Best Mao. And uh, somebody begins by saying, hmm, I like the ideas of Mr. Mao, but he should know that uh, some people do not work on such principles and advice. He's a dictator, and that's the fact which no one can change. Uh, Anderson. Let Mao just enjoy the energy money, but there's nothing he can do to change Museven ambitions. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, you, Chairman Mao, quite a number of people are sending a lot of questions and comments here, but I have to stop somewhere. Constitutional reforms have been on the agenda from Speaker Kandaga's regime, which, and the, which are surely magic is nobody going to use to, to midwife this. And Bino William, from his, his sen it's called Bino William, is sending this message from, from Gulu. Thank you so much for all, all your questions and your comments. And now I give the uh, Honorable Mao to respond to you. I hope you still remember uh, some of those uh, comments. Go for them, Honorable Mao. Like I said, Patrick, there are those who are obsessed with the idea of money. I, my father was a member of the middle class. I'm not seeing money for the first time. It was his choice that I grew up in a village, and I think it has helped me a lot. So please don't, don't lecture me about money because I'm not in politics for money. Number two, after the 2021 election, President Museveni extended a hand to me I had a choice, either to extend my hand also, 
ought to extend a fist like this. So I extended the hand. You can't shake hands if you're hostile. I understand those who are pessimistic. By the way, Patrick, pessimism is a very safe place. For instance, if you go to bed saying, I know it will rain again. There will be a flood like the other day. So if it doesn't rain, then you're pleasantly surprised. If it rains, then you're proved right. So being a pessimist is a way of having your cake and also eating it. And many people find it very safe. I do believe strongly that in a few years' time, many people will come back to me and say, no, but Mao, forgive us because you were right. They fault me for quoting the Bible. I'm not to blame for your illiteracy in the Bible. You are also there, free to read it if you want. I can quote Shakespeare also. I can quote or quote Pabitek. I can quote many authors. But I'm a Christian and I quote the Bible because my grandfather was a barefoot Anglican revivalist. And I also read the Bible from cover to cover twice in order to master the Acholi language. So I'm very familiar with the Bible. So let me again unapologetically refer to the Bible. Many of you who are now insulting me and making those unsavory innuendos about eating, about being a traitor, about being bought, I'm used to that. You know, in the Bible, after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his apostles. Peter sort of saw him, saw this shadowy figure on the water, and he believed that that truly was the risen Christ. But the other apostles were not sure. So Peter behaved like a fool. He stepped out of the boat because Jesus told him, come, and he started walking towards that shadowy figure. Those in the boat thought Peter was an idiot risking his life. But Peter returned as a hero. My fellow Ugandans, let me be the fool in this country. Let me be the idiot. Let me be the laughing stock for now. But I'll come back as a hero. In the same way that those who thought we would go to the Garamba forest and get chopped into pieces by the LRA were the ones who welcomed us at the airport when we came back. There were hundreds of people waiting to welcome us. So I do not know your level of belief, but I hope that my belief in Uganda will inspire you to do some unusual things. You are asking me about whether I trust this government, the people I'm working with. The Bible says, judge not that ye may not be judged. I believe very strongly that what I'm proposing will deliver a peaceful transition in Uganda. In fact, I'm proposing a three-phase transition. Phase one is consensus building. Broadly, a consensus about what constitution we give ourselves. National dialogue. We talk about the things that make us Uganda. This Uganda is a difficult country. Everywhere you have Batoro, Banyankole, Acholi, Langi, Karamojong, Baganda. You wake up and ask yourselves, where are the Ugandans? I look forward to the day when we shall be Ugandans rather than sinking in our you know, tribal cocoons. So phase one is consensus building. Phase two is implementing the consensus. I think that is the next term, wherever it will start. That is the second phase. When we come together, and my ideal situation and the desire of my heart 
is that we should have really a, a broad government, a government of national unity, where we all come together, put all our energies behind the goals we have set for ourselves. We overcome our differences. We look at the bigger picture. Irrespective of our, our other differences, we focus on, on the bigger picture. That is phase two, when we implement what we have agreed on. Phase three is the new Uganda, where we now actively enjoy the fruits of the consensus we have built and <coughs> the practical measures we have put in place so that the consensus is actualized. I saw somebody bringing in the, the issue of the anti-homosexuality. I think the, the, the president has uh, talked about it. Do you really want my opinion? I don't know, you're the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. <laughs> on the side of justice. We have our values as Africans, and it is important that we start by using the language of those from these uh, socially liberal societies. Africa is generally not yet ready for that kind of social liberalism. So I hear the languages of politicians, like in America, they say, whether you are black or white, Democrat or Republican, gay or straight. Gay? Straight? What is the opposite of straight? Not straight. <laughs> gay. No. If you have a straight line, what's the opposite <laughs> of a straight line? A crooked line. So, I think you would say whether you are normal or abnormal, but there it is, it is in our face. And these are also our citizens, some of them. And citizens have a right to participate in the debate. I'm hoping that when the bill comes, all, all sides will have a vigorous debate and we follow the debate. But my honest, sincere opinion is that God created sex for purposes of procreation to fulfill his purpose of populating the world. And he only made it pleasurable so that we don't approach it with clenched teeth. Instead, he made it pleasurable so that people look forward to it. And I think that intention is ever present and nobody should lose sight of it. Honorable Nobot Mao, I want to thank you so much for your time and uh, for having responded to some of those comments and the questions that have come your way. Uh, unless you have something else you want to say as a parting shot, very briefly, because we'll come to the end of tonight's edition of the On The Spot. Somebody asked uh, a very stupid question. Is Mao still in opposition? Is the Pope a Catholic? <laughs> okay, thank you so, so much. I, I know sometimes we can have disagreements as Ugandans. I believe we have a good country and we are good people. And I believe that if we sit on the table and talk, it's better than fighting. There are options. There are those who want maybe to fight or to destroy, and there are those who want to develop and protect. How I wish Ugandans we can choose to develop and protect. Good night and God bless Uganda.